the man grabs a pile of dung and sniffs it, after confirming that it's fresh cow dung. He rubs the dung on his face, then he had everyone else smear it all over their bodies. Only by disguising themselves with the smell of the dung, they can get closer to the yaks, so that the yaks can relax their guard. The chief gave the order at the right moment. The clan throws out their spears, they thrust them into the ground to form a fence, forcing the prey to turn tail and run, and fall off the cliff. But one of the herd, a violent yak, stopped dead in its tracks, and rushed at a boy. He's the chief's son, and on his first hunt, faced with the mad yak, he was so frightened that he ran away. The yak pushes him off the cliff. He hung onto the cliff face, clutching a rock. He was waiting to be rescued, but the rock suddenly broke. He fell hard. He landed on a rocky outcrop. He didn't know if he was alive or dead. I don't know how long it took. A vulture began to tear at the boy's beak. <laughs> So he's still alive, but when he looks down, he realizes he's on a cliff face. If he's not careful, he'll be crushed. He was sure his father would come for him, but there was no answer to his cries, so he tried to escape on his own. He tried to climb down the cliff, but he couldn't find a place to land. He clung to the rocks and hung awkwardly on the cliff face. But God saved him, as the rain poured down. Water began to collect at the bottom of the cliff, until it soon reached a certain depth. He leapt into the water. When the boy woke up again, he was on the ground. He wanted to go to his father, but there was a sharp pain in his lower leg. He took off his shoes and saw that his feet were swollen beyond recognition. He must have broken his leg jumping into the water. He stuck his foot between two stones. He twisted it. The bone was put back in place and he used a tree branch to make a brace. He could barely walk, but when he got to the top of the cliff, there wasn't a single member of the clan here. There was only a pile of stones on the ground. My father thought he had fallen to his death. There was no way to save his body, so he made a temporary grave out of stones. The boy didn't blame his father, because in primitive society, Tribes want to survive in nature. There was no other way to survive in nature but to hunt together. And now winter is coming. To lead his people safely back to their homeland was his father's greatest responsibility as chief. Because 10,000 years ago, the winter was long and brutal, and powerful enough to destroy any species. But without his father's company, how could he find his way home? Meanwhile, Hungry wolves were already stalking him in the distance. The boy runs for his life with a limp. There was no place to hide in the vast plains. He ran for his life towards a dead tree. Before he can climb it, a wolf bites his trousers. He was about to be dragged down. He took out his dagger and stabbed the wolf. Then he climbed up the tree and escaped. But the wolves didn't leave. They stayed under the tree all night. They didn't leave until dawn. Only the wounded gray wolf was left behind. The boy made a spear out of stones and twigs to kill the wolf and eat it. But as he listened to the wolf's pitiful cries, he softened his heart. Like himself, he had been abandoned by his people because of his injuries. The boy felt the same way. He didn't want to let the wolf die. He wanted to save him. The boy took out a rope and tied it tightly around the wolf's mouth, so he wouldn't be afraid of being bitten. Then he picked up the wolf and carried him to the river. He cleaned up his wounds. He found a cave to spend the night. But when he woke up the next day, but when he woke up the next day, he found that the wolf had broken the rope around his mouth and bared its teeth at him. Instead of being afraid, the boy handed him a bowl of water and bandaged his wounds with a scarf. The wolf, which had been so fierce, became docile. The next day, the boy shot a rabbit. He was about to drill a log for a fire, but the wolf came at him and tried to take the rabbit. The boy slapped him right in the face. He tore the raw rabbit to his face to assert his sovereignty. And this action, the wolf tamed himself. At night, he finally ate the roasted meat, but the wolf could only watch, although his mouth was watering, but he didn't come any closer, until the boy heard the wolf grunting and whining, then he threw him a piece of meat, seeing that winter was coming, the boy didn't dare to stay, he said goodbye to the wolf, and set off on his journey back to his tribe, but after a long walk, he realized, the wolf was following him, no matter how hard he tried, it kept following him at a distance of 100 meters, the boy was so angry that he threw a stick at him, but the wolf picked up the stick and ran towards him, the first dog in history was born, seeing that the wolf was so loyal to him, the boy and the wolf went home together, he named him Alpha, with the wolf's help, the boy never had to worry, he never had to worry about finding food, 
they worked together well, the alpha hunts the prey, and the boy would build the fire and cook the meat. When it gets cold, the alpha reminds the boy to keep him warm, they lived a life of ease and comfort, but it didn't last long. Winter came early and the land was covered in snow and ice. There was less and less prey to be caught. The only way to get back to the tribe is to walk through the snow and ice, hoping to return to the tribe as soon as possible. But the ice suddenly breaks up. The boy falls straight into the ice. He's swept away by the underwater rapids. On top of the ice, the alpha, whose heart is set on saving lives. Underneath the ice, the boy is trying to survive. Underneath the ice, the boy is trying to survive. In a moment of desperation, Alpha leaps up. He tries to break through the ice, but it's too much for his small frame. Luckily, the boy was able to pull out his dagger and break through the ice. The Alpha pulls him away from the ice. The boy used his last strength to build a fire and take off his clothes. O's Alpha warmed himself in the snow. That's how he survived. But the cold river water, frostbite on the boy's lungs, and if he doesn't get it right, even he didn't know, he'd never make it out. From this blizzard of ice and snow, a man and a wolf wandering on an ice field, in the daytime they traveled by snow and wind, at night, they have to carry the cold wine through the night. After freezing and starving for who knows how long, they finally found a campsite. Looking at the people sitting outside the tent, the boy ran over excitedly. He thought he was saved. But when he got closer, the man in front of him was frozen to a popsicle. There was no food or water in the tent. Luckily, there was a bow to use. He took it with him and continued on his way. But he didn't get very far before a pack of hounds came upon him. He led Alpha into the blizzard. The snow blocked the hounds' view. They escaped by hiding in a cave. But what they didn't know, they didn't know that an even more ferocious panther lived here. A meal brought to their doorstep. The panther didn't hesitate to pounce on the boy. Luckily, Alpha was there to stop it, but Alpha was able to save him. He fights the panther to the death, but Alpha is outmatched by Alpha's size. At that critical moment, the boy grabbed his bow and arrow and adjusted his breathing, and he killed the panther with a single arrow. Once again, he's saved the day, but Alpha is not so lucky. He was covered in blood. He hasn't even taken two steps before he collapses. He hasn't even taken two steps before he collapses. Now the only way for Alpha to have a chance. Alpha has a chance of survival. They set off again, and this time, they finally find the signposts left by their people. That means they're not far from home. But the wind and snow are getting worse. Each step they take takes all the strength they can muster, and the wounded Alpha's pace became slower and slower. Finally, he couldn't hold on and collapsed in the snow. The boy knelt in front of him, looking at the dying Alpha. He wanted to save him, but there was nothing he could do. So he gave in to his heart. He picked up his former partner and continued on through the wind and snow. Even if they died, they would die together because of the companionship along the way. Alpha was more than just a wolf. He's his people. He was his brother. The boy's determination for who knows how long. He finally reached the end of the trail. He saw the familiar tribe in front of him. He finally smiled as the boy carried his mate. When the boy carried his partner and walked back to the camp trembling, everyone there was stunned. Even the father couldn't believe that his son was still alive until he touched the boy's hand. It was not until he touched the boy's hand that he knew it wasn't an illusion. In his last moments of unconsciousness, he begged his father to help Alpha. When the boy woke up, Alpha slowly opened his eyes. They were finally saved. But Saman of the tribe. But Saman of the tribe kept touching Alpha's stomach. He seemed to sense something. Then he lifted a cub from underneath Alpha. It turned out that Alpha had been carrying the baby all the way. But even so, he tried his best to protect the boy. He hugged Alpha a little. More than gratitude, he felt pain. Soon after, the wolf cubs grew up. They accompanied the boy to protect the tribe. They continued to write new legends. Until many. Many years later, this wolf evolved into a whole new species, the husky.